Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa alihi wasabihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah, Allah uh, gather us again uh, tonight. Alhamdulillah for to part of his remembrance. Today we learn about the fourth caliph, the caliph number four of the how many caliphs all together? Four. four. Is a trick question. Some people say four. There's other um, the other narrations as well, or, or some ulama says actually, if you because Rasulullah mentions one of the hadith is the caliph is about thirty years, and uh, Ali bin Abi Talib actually passed away on the fortieth, thirty nine plus, and he was uh, replaced by his own son, which is Hassan bin Ali. And and he actually stepped down after six months in power, so if you actually calculate the whole for thirty years, it's actually include Hassan bin Ali. But anyway, this is probably small, um, not many discussions about that. All right, uh, we talk about the three other caliphs, and then um, today uh, we're gonna go with uh, someone who's very. He's actually he's very close in terms of lineage with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And before we start, I want to talk about where is actually the word we always mention the kulafa ur rasidin, right? Where is it actually mentioned? It's actually mentioned in hadith in Abu Dawud in uh, Jami Tirmidhi, uh, where Allah mens- uh, where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, um, I order you usikum bi taqwallah, right? Uh, someone asked ya Rasulullah give us advice, and Rasulullah said usikum bi taqwallah, listen and obey, uh, and also obey your Amir. Even he is a slave. Wasami wa taati wa in taa maru alaikum abdu. Even though he is a slave, and then Rasulullah continue, you will see fasayara ikhtilafan kathiran, great controversy, and then Rasulullah advice is so follow my sunnah. Fa alaikum sunnati kul wa sunnat kulafat kulafau rasidin. So this is the first time uh, the word Kulafa al is mentioned. It's a bit warm in here actually. Can we turn on the icon? Or oh, just me? <laughs> it's a bit hot, yeah. yeah, it's a bit warm, right? I didn't, I didn't realize I have a uh, long sleeves as well. So that is the word. It's actually Kulafa al uh, and Mahdiin. Mahdiin means, uh, Rasidin means rightly guided. We always say the the caliph who's rightly guided, and Madin means he is the one who's guiding. So you know sometimes uh, I like to make a dua where Allah guide me, and may Allah guide others through me. So the kulafa rasidin is people, uh, kulafa the rightly guided, but also people getting guidance from them. It's Mahdiin from the word Mahdi Mahdiin. Someone's get guidance. So this is where we got the the word uh, kulafa rasidin. So Rasulullah SAW mentions follow sunnahku. My, that's an Indonesian word. So my sunnah, <laughs> sunnahku, this is Indonesian word, and the sunnah of Kulafa Rasidin. All right, uh, let's compare between the four uh, caliph. The the shortest one, which is Abu Bakar, and he was uh, he was in office. Or I would like to so do what office. He was he was he was a caliph for uh, about one year and a bit, one year and a half. So it's about two years. So he established unity and stability. So just right after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, there's a couple of uh, there's a people who rebel, and there's also the uh, people who uh, claim themselves as Nabi. I don't know whether you remember the Al Qazab, Musalama Al Qazab, and then uh, it was at the time of Abu Bakar when he sent troops to uh, to uh, eradic- uh, eradicate these people and then to make sure that people actually unite. So this is the first two years uh, until he passed away at the age of 63. So exactly the same age as Rasulullah Sallam passed away. Rasulullah Sallam passed away is on age of 63. And then <clears throat> Umar bin Khattab, this is where the military and political prowess. So this is uh, where 
lands and lands being conquered when they see at the time the Syrian which is the uh, the the Sham and as well as the Sassanid Empire right? so this is Byzantium Empire and then Sassanid Empire were conquered and more and more lands and conquered and more and more wealth keep coming and he he was in office for about 10 years and then after Umar bin Khattab Uthman was uh, about 12 years the first six years to continue expansion from Umar bin Khattab but then the last six years the last I think the last four or five years when he start having the uh, actually the start of the first fitnah was actually start having there so when we talk when we mention about Umar, Uthman bin Affan where a lot of people comes to Medina and rebels and, and, and whatnot we talk about stories and how, how he actually end up uh, being assassinated by the mobs then uh, Ali bin Abi Talib uh, his, uh, he was about six years and that is more on internal strife so there's a lot of battles between the Muslims and in fact uh, if you like I said probably before we had this uh, discussions I don't want to talk about the other strands of Islam but this is actually where the uh, the start of the uh, another strands of Islam actually started because of starting from this point uh, as well as after the first fitna and then and during the time of Ali bin Abu Talib um, the he went to a major battle and sadly I don't know how many times I read the stories about Ali bin Abu Talib but there's always something that I feel a little bit sometimes a bit emo emotional as well because uh, when you read about stories and not and not many people know I think I think um, I heard about the the ulama in the old days and 60s and 50s they try to not to tell the stories about because it's a civil war between the Muslims at the time of Ali bin Abu Talib and it was so great it was so big and and not many of us know actually not because I think two things number one because probably our ulama decided not to tell the stories and probably because especially for new Muslims or probably uh, young Muslims are probably very hard to a uh, Muslim fighting among each other but well, that's number one but number two as well because the other strand of Islam actually have more and more stories about this why because the growth or the start of the religion actually started from here so our this event at the time of Ali, which is the, the fitna and the, 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 the civil war, is for us it's just the history, right? The histories and, and nothing to do about after the passing away of Rasulullah SAW, no, no new teachings, no Rasulullah, uh, it was Surah Al Ma'idah, right? Uh, was, was, uh, I, today I complete my deen and I, I'm happy for this is to be my and so on. This is, and after that, there will be no new teaching, right? So that's why for us, the story of Ali and the fightings, and not many people know because of, but the other strand of Islam, they actually learn and learn and more, and they study, they even do detail, A says this, B says what, and what not, right? So we don't got to go to that detail, especially some of them, so it's probably not true as well, because they're coming from, because for them, this is the foundations of their, uh, their religion, right? Okay, uh, just uh, quote one hadith. Uh, Anta mini, you are from me. Bi manzilati Haruna min Musa. Just like Harun to Musa. Except Rasulullah SAW, innahu la nabi ba'di. There's no prophet after me. So Rasulullah closed the, the deal right away. Right. And again, it is part of our akidah, part of our belief that we don't believe any other prophet after Rasulullah SAW, right? You can call whatever you want, but when someone says that they acknowledge another Nabi after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they cannot be called Islam. Uh, simply because, and again, this is part of our Akidah, right? We believe that Asadu Allah Ida Allah Asadu Allah Muhammad Rasulullah is a part of the message that I'm the last Prophet. Right? So anyone who, I don't know, I think from now we still hear someone claim themselves as Nabi, right? And Indonesia as well, like someone declared themselves as Nabi and it was news and everything. And he talked to, uh, uh, he said he, uh, he, Angel Jibru came down and talked to him and we come up with you. Uh, so, so many people. 
and even after the the uh, the passing away of uh, Mo Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's actually people, there's a two actually that I, I that I know about that become that declare themselves as Nabi, even prophetess as well as a female prophet. Um, <clears throat> What is Harun to Musa? Have you heard the story of Musa alayhi salam? Uh, one, when we talk about uh, the Prophet Musa, Prophet Harun is, is like a sidekick, to, uh, if, if you will. Right? He's, he's the advisor and sidekick. Uh, if you look at Surah Toha, uh, when Rabbi Surah Ali Sadri, you, remember, you know this dua, Rabbi Surah Ali Sadri wa fi'ali amri wa wa huda talisani ya fqahu qali. If you continue that ayah, Watch Ali Waziran min ahli Haruna Akhi. This, then the continue of the dua is Prophet Musa Alaihi Salam making dua to Allah, Ya Allah, uh, make my chest open, my tongues uh, and so on. And then after that he said, and make my Wazir, Wazir is an advisor, right? Haruna Akhi, my brother Harun. So this is the close relationship between Musa and Harun. And uh, what a blessing for uh, Ali bin Abi Talib that Rasulullah mentioned. You, you like almost like my prophet sidekick to me, uh, except that there's no prophet after me. So it's a big blessing for Ali bin Abi Talib. All right. Uh, today uh, we're gonna talk about four things in Salah. So we can cover probably about an hour. We start from the first one, uh, the titles and lineage. Can I do it? A highlighter, how do I do this? No. Okay. <clears throat> Titles and lineage. Uh, Ali was the closest relationship to Rasulullah SAW compared to the other um, the other uh, caliphs. He's actually the cousin of Rasulullah SAW, and cousins mean from the same grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. So Abdul Muttalib have number of children, one of them is Abdullah, which is the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the other child, the other son is Abu Talib and that's Ali Radiola, so he's actually cousin but the thing is, the age difference is about 30 years Abu Talib has, Abu, Abu Talib is only married to one person or one lady by the name of Fatima, Fatima binti Saad and the first son was Talib as the name suggests, Abu Talib. And the second one was Akil and then Jafar, Jafar bin Abu Talib. We heard stories about uh, Jafar, we heard stories, but not so much about uh, Talib. Not so much about Akil, probably one of few narrations about him. And then uh, Abu Talib. So every 10 years, one son. What, ten, and then Abu Talib was uh, about 30 years uh, different to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, he was born after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married to Khadijah. And because Ali bin uh, sorry Abu Talib was very poor, and uh, Rasulullah when he was uh, af after the um, the passing away of uh, his mother and then his uh, grandfather, he was actually looked after by his uncle Abu Talib, and just to pay the favor. So when he already has his house with uh, Khadija, and at the time Abu Talib was very poor. And that's what Rasulullah came. Let me uh, let me uh, look after Ali for you. So he so he was actually raised at the house of Rasulullah Sallam. And so many children at the house. Uh, Zaid bin Haritha was also there, and the son of Zaid Osama bin Zaid, uh, also at the children of around of a Prophet. If you look at this, all the children around the Prophet, they become giant, right? So this is one of the um, uh, one of the uh, the amazing story, but about how Rasulullah as a father figure. For example, um, Zaid bin Haritha. Zaid bin Haritha was once called Zaid bin Muhammad because a, he's actually the slave of Khadija, but once he got married, Khadija gifted this uh, Zaid bin Haritha to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah was actually kept, uh, sorry, 
um, Zaid bin Haritha was actually kidnapped when he was very young, eight, nine years old. And when he was gifted to Rasulullah, he was very sad because he was a slave and then he was making a poem about how he sad he was. And after living for a few years with Rasulullah, <coughs> his father actually found out and that he was being kidnapped. He came to Mecca and came to and then found out okay, he is actually owned by the person by the name of Muhammad Rasulullah at that time was uh, was not a prophet. And then he came and says, Okay, let me tell the price. I'll buy him off from you. Uh, he's my son, he's my uncle. Then then uh, Rasulullah was very sad and then he asked, Why don't you ask uh, why don't you ask Zaid? Right, so he come they come to Zaid and then Zaid says, No, I will not be coming home with you or my father and my uncle. I'm going to stay with Muhammad. So this is can you imagine someone who actually fell in love with Rasulullah when he saw Rasulullah to fall in love. There's a lot of stories about kids and children around around the Prophet. They become big giants, right? Anas bin Malik in Medina, for example, right? So as uh, Ali bin Abi Talib is one of them. So he was the first cousin, very close to the sunset. He was raised in the house of Rasulullah. He prayed together when Rasulullah prayed with Khadija. So he prayed together. So he was probably one of the first few Muslims, the first few Muslims who are uh, the first persons who enter Islam. And not every everyone knows that he was married to Fatima, but not everyone knows that not only Ali married to the daughter of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi he also married to the grand daughter of Rasulullah Umama right so Umama is the the, the daughter of uh, Zainab and Zainab is another daughter of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, do you i don't know whether you know there was a hadith about Rasulullah sallam carrying a baby when he was praying and he put that and carry that that was Umama right so and before Zainab passed away, uh, she asked Ali, and when I pass away, can you marry my, my niece? So it's actually Umama who is the niece of Fatima, right? So you didn't know that before, did you? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, <clears throat> there's another caliph who also married to the granddaughter of Rasulullah. Do you know who? Another caliph. Not Abu Bakr. Uh, not Uthman, <laughs> there's only one left. <laughs> Umar bin Khattab, married to Um Kultum, the daughter of Ali, the daughter of Fatima. Right. So, yes, uh, so married to the descendants of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Names and titles, uh, he was originally born uh, and Abu Talib was not around. So the, the mother, which is Fatima binti Asad, gave, her, gave him the name with Asad, which is a lion. And when Abu Talib came back, oh, you give the, the baby the name already? No, no, I'm going to change it. I'll change it to Ali. Right, so the, that is where he, he got his name. So originally Asad and then become Ali, Ali bin Abu Talib. He's about 30 years younger than the Prophet. We mentioned that before. Uh, raised in the house of the Prophet. We mentioned that before. And his first son from Fatima is Hassan. And therefore, People call him Abu al Hassan or Abu al Hassan. And there was there was a story where in Medina he had a he had a quarrel with his wife, Fatima. So he was upset, right? So he didn't know what to do. So he went to the masjid and then he was lying down beside the masjid. Uh, he didn't know where to go, right? So apparently people who is guaranteed Jannah, they also fight between husband and wife as well. Right. So if you and me have problems with wife and husband and wife, that's common, right? Even people who guaranteed Jannah, they still have Jesus. The problem is, the, no, not the problem. The, is, the beauty of this religion is, is not just because they're Sahaba, they are all, because they're not only, the, uh, they have to be human and they have to be role models to us. If they have problems, we have problems. If Allah does not give them the problem, it's not fair. All the prophets, I mean, they have problems. The beauty of the religion is Allah, our, the prophets actually teach us how to deal with the problem. So we have desires, we have problems. If the prophets are not tested with desires and problems, then it's not fair for us. right? 
So that's why uh, when I heard the story, oh, uh, Ali fight with the Fatima, and Fatima is a is a daughter of Prophet, all right? So yes, yes, indeed, they had they had problems, they had uh, quarrels, and and the good thing is they uh, uh, Abu, uh, sorry, uh, Ali Ali went to the masjid. So went to masjid when I saw the masjid and lying down on the on the sand until he got covered with the sand. And Rasulullah came to Fatima and said, where is, where is Ali? I don't know, we had a fight and then he left, something like that, right? So Rasulullah went, okay, and then he found Ali and Ali was lying down on uh, on the sand like that, full of dust. And Rasulullah called him, Ya Abu Turab. Turab means uh, dust or sand right? or soil, so something like that. And that is his uh, nickname, his Lakab Abu Turab. And, Rasul, and Ali bin Abi Talib was very proud and he tell everyone about this story. And every, now I'm telling you about this story as well. So this story is about the name. It's not only about the name, the how, how the, the family of the closest to Rasulullah SAW, they had issues, they had problems, but they, how they deal with the problem. That's how we learn from them. All right, uh, continue. Just the the father, the brothers of Ali, I mentioned about Talib, Akil, Jafar, Jafar radiallahu, uh, radiallahu anhu. Uh, Jafar was the was the leader of the first immigration from uh, from Kaaba, from Makkah to Abyssinia. So there's a couple of Muslims before Hijrah, before Hijrah to Medina, the Hijrah to Abyssinia. Where, where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, go there to the uh, the uh, Malikul Adil, the uh, the king who's Adil, and then it was it was the Nijas uh, Najasi from Abyssinia. So the ja it was Jafar, right? Uh, and then Ali. So there's ten years apart, and there's other two um, two sisters, which is Umm Muhammad and Jumana. So this. Uh, physical feature, average height, handsome face with black eyes, uh, broad shoulders and large hands, and almost bald. Now, not everyone, not anyone, not everyone knows about his almost bald. Uh, so his bald is almost bald, almost completely bald except the the back of the head with some uh, patch of hairs, and large with a thick brow. So this is the, his physical feature. Um, yes, strong and brave. His bravery is one that actually marked Ali bin Abi Talib. Um, I think, I think yes, there will be a story about that again. So I, uh, Ali has a number of wives. Uh, the same with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was only married to Fatima, uh, when Fatima passed away, and then he married to other ladies. This is Umama. As I mentioned to you, this is Umama, which is the granddaughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a couple of wives, but I just uh, captured a few. Uh, why I captured this, I, I didn't have any detail, but thing is, right, they named their son Abu Bakr. So, you know, the other strands of Islam that says there's a huge fight between Abu Bakr and Ali. They hit each other, they even... It was it was one day someone Indonesian some of the Indonesian sisters came to me, and they bought this book. Apparently, this book coming from that narration, and they says uh, uh, asked me, sir, uh, can you do you know how why they uh, Ali uh, hit Fatima? I says, oh, what, what kind of book you reading? Uh, look at the book. Book is actually Indonesian, and how Abu Bakar came to the house and beat. So it's like. It's not like a, it's not like a sahaba. It's not like a, it's a story of thugs basically. Right? So I was so shocked hearing that. And then then I, I did a study about uh, Sia as well uh, about that strand of uh, Islam and the difference between that from from a few perspective and the 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 ulama the the councils ulama of Indonesia also uh, put together some brochures and booklets about the different. Um, uh, the different akida, the different uh, uh, the theology, if you will. So it's I think good for for us Muslims to know as well how we difference and how we, but not only how we different with them, but how we actually um, 
interact with them there probably something is, there should be no uh, enmity there should be no uh, enemy right there should be yeah um, this is another interesting part he has another son by the name of Muhammad but instead of calling him Muhammad bin Ali he was called Muhammad bin Hanafia do you know why this is interestingly all the son that has been Ali is only from Fatima all all of this people never call him people never usually call him by the name of the uh, their like this Khawla has uh, I think the grandfather or something or the the tribe is called Hanafia so that's why Muhammad bin Hanafia uh, another one this is very interesting you see this Asma binti Umaysh Asma bin to Umais actually was married to Jafar. Who's Jafar? Remember Jafar? Jafar bin Abi Talib. This lady by the name of Asma bin to Umais was actually married to Jafar and they went for hijrah to Abbasina. And then Jafar passed away during the battle of Mu'ta, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And then Asma become widow and just after finish the Ida time and Abu Bakr proposed her and they got married the marriage only last few years probably two or three years three years probably and Abu Bakr passed away and Asma become a widow for the second time and Ali which is the brother of Jaffa proposed to her again right and proposes so this uh you know that right you know what i mean right so married after like your ex what do you call the ex sister-in-law right so it is allowed in islam uh and then the merit of that they uh they have a son by the name of muhammad and yahya and also asma binti umais even though they married with um when she was married with abu bakar they also have a son by the name of Muhammad. So Muhammad bin Abu Bakr. So he was still a baby. So Muhammad bin Abu, Abu Bakr was actually raised in the house of Ali, right? Together with Yahya. They are all uh, small babies right? together. Right? So this is some, some of the family trees of uh, Ali. Ali was blessed with so many children. Uh, I got other names as well. I can't remember exactly how many uh, big families that he's got, right? So, as we talk about the titles and the lineage, now let's talk about some of the live events. So, do I have a feedback? Echo? No? Mine. Eh? Mine, okay. Alright, his bravery, he's known for... Have you heard the story about before the migration, before Hijrah to Medina, where everyone in Quraysh they started to have a conspiracy how they want to assassinate Rasulullah how they plan to do that I don't know whether you remember they, they each of the sub-tribe they pick up their every single youth from every single sub-tribe bring their sword and then when they kill Prophet Muhammad they kill together so no one will be responsible alone so every one of us will be responsible so this is the night that he was supposed to be killed so all the uh, the Quraysh has already bring all the youth and Rasulullah asked Ali bin Abi Talib to sleep in his bed so sleep on my bed and use my uh, my uh, cloak all right? and, and if you think about that Ali was at that time Ali was 30 years younger so it's probably near, nearly 20 right? so for him to be able to to think about okay you're going to be killed by the whole people of the whole town you're going to sneak out tonight and i'm going to be in your bed right you think about it if this is not iman and love what do you call this right so he's, he's still young but he's willing so this is one of the things that uh you know the just a little bit of sidetrack i don't know in uh, you heard the uh, a person by the uh, by the name of simon senek have you heard that before he's uh, one of the motivational speaker if you youtube it right his name is all over the uh, all over the place is one of the very inspired yeah. he gives 
talk about uh, how to be to become a good leader right one of the being a good leader is not only you inspire people who work for you but if you can make it in a way that they will they will fight for you they will defend you right and they will uh, they're even willing to die for you right so this is how they and how you treat them and so on and when it tell the story is that this is just amazing it's a very good story if you compare to the life of prophet Muhammad, how Rasulullah Sallam treated Ali can Ali actually can okay you're going to be killed tonight and people went to, let me sleep in your bed so if this is if you don't call this love and and how again this is how Rasulullah Sallam treated him and make it him has a very strong and deep iman and and he was actually tasked to not only that, in the following day, he, everyone in Makkah, this is very strange if you, look, if you think about it, everyone was ready to kill Rasulullah SAW. But some people in Makkah, when they go out and they, serve, they ask Rasulullah to look after their belongings. So they come to Rasulullah, so I'm going for a few months or whatever, I need to do some business, can you look after my belongings? And Rasulullah was known for that. So he keep other people's belongings. So before that night, before he left, so all of the other belongings, I need to return all of them, right? So he was going to be killed by the same people who put their belongings in the house, right? So he asked Ali to return all of them. So this is the, the task of Ali. So the following morning, Ali just returned. And then after that, Ali walked all the way. He didn't have any mount. He didn't have any camel or horse. He walked all the way to Medina and he was all fit his blood and everything. He was very brave, very strong. Uh, he always participated in all the battle. In most of the battle, they have, before the battle start, they assigned three people or some to do a combat. And Ali was uh, selected in many, uh, many of the battles and he always won the battle. Uh, the Battle of Badr, for example, Ali was fighting against uh, Walid bin Utbah and Hamza as well. The same thing in the Battle of Uhud. Uh, after the Battle of Badr, this is where Rasulullah asked Ali, uh, are you not planning to get married? Well, how about Fatima and the offer that I don't have anything in Rasulullah Sallallahu But if you're sure you're not, I have not, I don't have anything, think about it. Okay, I have armor. Okay, I can sell my armor. So he went to the market and he wants to sell what do you want to sell the armor for i want to get married but i don't have anything who's going uh, who are you going to go to get married with uh, to fatima and it was uthman okay uthman bought the bought the armor uh give the money and by the way i don't need this uh, this armor i think armor would be perfect for you why don't i just give it to you as a wedding gift so you keep the money and keep it so uh, there was there was the, the relationship with Uthman as well because the other narration always says that Ali has bad relations with Uthman but yeah um, <clears throat> uh, in the battle of Uhud he is the one who suffered about 16 wounds of course in battle of Uhud there's one Sahaba who's actually suffered the most it was by the name of Talha um, battle of Kaibar he also involved the battle the, in battle of Kaibar he was, he had an eye, a, what do you call that? Uh, there's an eye sickness that you can open his eyes of blood and uh, not blood, it's a reddish. And at the time, that the, before the Battle of Kaibar, Rasulullah mentioned, whoever tomorrow, uh, I will, tomorrow was, I will give this banner to someone, will Allah will give them victory. And everyone was dying to be, I hope that uh, that person will be me. And then the, mo the following morning, everyone was gathering. And Rasulullah said, where is Ali? Ali had uh, eye sickness, call him up. And then Rasulullah gave his saliva and he was recovered for one of the mujiz of, of Rasulullah SAW. And then he was the one who carried and go to Kaibar. Uh, to, uh, it, was, it was the battle of, uh, not the battle, what do you call it, the castle of the, the Jewish. And he went out and he killed so many people, and he even took the door of the the castle with him as his armor. And after the battle, he just dropped it, and it took six people to carry that uh, that door because he's just strong and how um, ready to die, uh, ready to fight uh, 
Ali bin Abi Talib. So Allah give victory to the hands who bearing the standard. Other important roles, uh, he was a governor. So Rasulullah already appointed him as a governor. Uh, at the time as uh, the Battle of Tabuk, Rasulullah went and then asked uh, Ali to become the governor. And he was sent by Rasulullah SAW to become the governor as well as the Jad as a Qadi in Yemen. And he has uh, the blessing of one of the fam few people who was the body uh, of uh, Rasulullah SAW. And uh, he is also the advisor of the three Khulafa. Just, just you know, uh, there's uh, three people that was the body of Rasulullah SAW. It was, it was actually all the family. Uh, uh, Ali bin Abu Talib, uh, Fadal bin Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, which is his cousin, and Usama bin Zaid. So Usama is actually part of the family as well because Usama, even though he's, he's, he's uh, almost like a stepson, he's uh, the one who, uh, but the one that uh, went into the kubur, it is the uh, Fadal uh, bin Abbas and then Khatam bin Abbas. All right, so that is some of the live events. Uh, and let's talk about the, the time during the caliphate. I, this is where I'm a bit struggling. I want to tell the story of the Kali, uh, but but I think I want to say more about the the story of the um, the fitna, the battles, the the um, what do you call that, the civil war. Um, just before the civil war, start of the civil war, I just want to have a little bit of story about how Ali was chosen. Uh, remember last time we talked about. Uthman was assassinated and he became a Suhad, uh, died as a Sahid. And at that time, all the Muslim was, was really shocked. They, they really, there's really confusion. And especially they couldn't find the killer. There's so many people, some of the killers actually don't know where to get them and so on. Um, and Ali was very, very upset because he was, uh, he was asking Hassan to stay in the house of Uthman and Hassan has been staying in the house of Uthman except for that night when Uthman says go away I'm, I'm okay right now in other narrations Ali was very upset that to Hassan and and uh, because of this um, but everyone cannot see anyone else to become the Caliph except Ali so all the Sahaba went to Ali okay you are the only one who can do this Ali says no it's very tough, it's very hard, the conditions is not here. Yeah, but uh, after that, he originally didn't want to be the Caliph, but because of the pressures and the other Sahaba, because everyone just take the oath of allegiance, uh, there's no con contenders, no, no one. So you to be the right person to do that. And, you're, and his job is mostly to restore peace and order. Because think about it, if you kill like uh, the head of state, right? This is this is a serious problem, right? So it's an insult to the whole state, actually. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and then he also uh, asked to um, to find the murder, the who assassinated uh, the Uthman. All right. Um, when he was, I just quoted some story about the Jew and the stolen shield. I don't know whether you heard this. I don't. I don't care if you hear, if you already heard. So I want to tell you the story because I like the story actually. So during the uh, Caliph of Ali, where he was walking and I saw his armor at the hand of of the Jews, and then he knows armor is like your own personal things, right? Your bags, almost like you know this is the mark here. This when I have this battle, this mark here. I know this for sure. This is mine, right? So he went up to this guy, this is mine. No, this is mine. Prove it. Okay. And then they all back and forth. Okay, because of that, they, he didn't give up. Let's go to the, the judge. So they went to the Qadi, went to the judge, and the judge says, uh, Ya Mirul Mu'minin, is it yours? Yes. Okay, can you prove it? And he called his Hassan, his, his son, uh, Hassan. And Hassan came up. 
Is it your father's? Yes. And you know what you know what the Qadi say? The, the judge says, in Islam, your son cannot become your witness for you because of the bias. Okay? And because of this, you lost the court and this armor belonged to the Jewish. Final. Give. And Ali says, fine. That's it. And then the Jew says, that's it. You, you, you give up. You just give up. The, the judge says it's to you. Then it belongs to you. Right? So, and you actually the ruler of this, this country, this nation. And you, you give up to me under, yeah. And then because of that, he becomes Sada. The, one of the lessons learned from this, you know, sometimes we want to follow, you know, sometimes right, we want to follow the rule and then we cannot win, we cannot get what we want. And because of that, we try to do something which is not following the rule, like doing violence. Ah, because they don't want to listen to us, let's do violence. Or they don't want to do that still. Everyone's doing it, let's do it. Right. The thing is in Islam, when you do what Allah asks you to do, victory is not granted for you. Right? It's not guaranteed for you. Allah just wants you to do based on what... Just because you're doing based on Sharia, in this case is a law, it does not mean you will win. Win or not, it comes from Allah. So it, it, is, it is for me somehow is a, is, a, is a profound... Especially Ali being a caliph, he can actually, he's not above the law. That's definitely one lesson. But the other lesson is, whatever you do, the steps based on the Sariah, it does not guarantee you win, right? It just tests your passion because the winning or not winning is not used, right? Uh, during his time, he set up the police. He set up the police in the market. He set up prisons. So he set up, uh, is one of the, his political decisions. Uh, he also making sure that his governor following orders and he was once found that one of his governor is not following orders and because people complain to him he's actually hit with his staff right so I don't know whether like the prime ministers call the governors <laughs> properly that would be a good idea you know <laughs> because it's probably complete humiliation rather than putting in the prison and just hit it with the staff all right uh, all right, Battle of the Camel. Have you heard about this Battle of the Camel? Have you heard about this Battle of the Camel? It's called Battle of the Camel because it was our mother, Aisha Radilana, on that camel. All right. So, what happened? Uh, after Ali became the Caliph, all right? They are, these Sahaba, they all gave their oath of allegiance to Ali. But they also think our Caliph Uthman was just murdered. We need to get who killed him. Because if you don't, if you don't get this guy, it's our, the next Caliph is not going to be safe. Everyone can, whenever they feel upset, they can just kill the Caliph. Right, so we have to put this in justice. You get these people and uh, send them to court. Right, so, so a lot of Sahaba start thinking about that. Right, so in order this caliph, this caliphate, I would say, to be saved and in orders and everything, you have to catch the murder and bring them to justice. It is the must. So they have, they have this idea uh, to do that. So. Not only to revenge the the, uh, the killing of Uthman, but also to restore peace and to guarantee there's no one going to that. Whenever they don't like the caliph, they go in and kill, right? right. They can do impeach at least, but not killing, right? So uh, these people finally grouped together. It was actually, I saw Radulanda was in Makkah at that time. And the two other Sahaba, Talha and Zubair, they're all great Sahaba. They're actually uh, people who guaranteed Jannah. They were thinking, they're purely thinking, it is part of Amar Mahruf Nahi Munkar, right? How to prevent this from happening again. They want to get together all people in uh, around the region. They want to get sympathies and supports. And so they go all the way from Makkah and all the way to, uh, uh, to, to Basra, around Iraq, somewhere there. They go there just to gain confidence, uh, uh, sorry, supports and everything. 
So basically, like the political support. Let's let's get this whoever the the killer of uh, Uthman. We need to catch them and, and so on. But uh, at the same time, Ali was thinking, "Is not a good time for me to get the killer right now. I need to make sure people listen to me. I need to make sure the peace and everything. That's why I set up police and stuff like that. Probably it's not a good time right now." And even then, it's very hard to catch the, the murderer because it's not one, so many of them. Uh, the wife of Uthman, Nafia, right? He, uh, she didn't see the, the actual killer. So, so we don't know who's the killer. Probably they already went back to their, uh, their village, their town, whatever. It's very hard. So it's not easy. Because of that, Ali think he didn't want to rush into finding the killer. He was thinking just continue with restoring order and peace, right? So it's two different political opinions. And then hearing about that, so he took his army to Basra as well. And there, these two big Sahaba, right, from two different camps met at uh, Basra. And they start having negotiations. They are Sahaba actually. They war, they have war with Rasulullah, they had battle with Rasulullah together. So they sit there and then they said, okay, we cannot, we, we need to make sure that we, we resolve this problem, blah, blah, blah. All right. Okay. They decided. Okay. Let's let's move on. Let's uh, let's let's go to Medina and discuss about this, right? So, and they thought everything was clear. So they went back to the tents, and apparently there was some infiltration. The people who are not really happy with everything at peace, and he's the one who enticed or uh, uh, people to go and and to the house of Uthman and everything. And because of that. Okay, let's start a chaos. So what they do around early in the morning, some people from here shoot the arrows into the other tent. And these people, they go to here as well, they shoot arrows the other tent. So they're shooting arrows each other, right? And the other people, wow, I thought we were in peace. Oh, they took the swords and they end up having, uh, the, actually the violence broke up, right? So because there's this infiltration, and it was uh, it was very strange and it's quite terrible. And at that time, uh, Aisha Radullah came with, and our mother has to have a special tent, right, so to cover that. So that's why the camel very from very dis from a distance you can tell this is the the camel of our mother or uh, all the all the mother of believers, the Umahatul Mu'minin. They have the special tent. You can see the camel. So the camel went through right in the middle of the battle, and some of them even try to uh, try to kill the camel as well and there was a scrimmage and uh, knowing that Sahaba from this side Sahaba from this ah, this is our mother we have to protect her so they all went to protect her but they will still keep you arrows and everything coming right so and whatnot and Ali came in and then he had to kill the camel to make sure that he came around away and then save uh, Aisha Radul and her she was safe and she was returned after that uh, back to Medina. And they, actually, um, I sort of not remember this hadith. Actually, this battle was already predicted by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, there was a time when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting next to Ali. And then Rasulullah says, Ali, you will be, have, you'll be having a fight argument with Aisha. And Ali says, I might be the, the, the losing one, I might be the bad one or something like that. No, you will be the right one. But when the time comes, make sure you deliver, you, uh, you take, uh, you send Aisha home safely. So there is a hadith actually about that. So uh, that's why um, uh, I was, Aisha Radulallah was, was brought back to Medina and she was safe and every time she remembered this, she actually regretted doing that. Uh, it's about 200 people died. Uh, so it was a big... So yes, the camel of Ali was struck um, and it's about Taha died of that. Zubair bin Awam. Zubair bin Awam is actually the, the cousin of Rasulullah SAW. And Zubair bin Awam married to Asma, which is the sister of Aisha. So it's like a brother-in-law. And he was thinking, oh, I should, this is not right. So he left the battle, but someone caught him and murdered him right there, right there and there. So Talha died, Zubair also died. And Taha was, uh, 
was the one who, at the Battle of Uhud, he was like a sea urchin, you know, urchin with arrows. And so Rasulullah said, if you want to see the living Suha, living Sahid, watch him. So the, the day of Uhud is called the day of Talha because Talha was actually the one who covered Rasulullah Sallallahu and he got everywhere, right? So he got uh, arrows and stuff like that. So 200 people died and I saw Radiallah safe and returned to Medina. And every time the verse of Quran about uh, about who you the the wives uh, the wives of Muha, the wives of the Prophet stay at home. There's I think it's a surah uh, surah number three three was surah number three surah Al Hazab. And every time uh, she recite that she always weep. All right. Uh, okay. The battle between Muslims and Muslims, Sahaba and Sahaba. What, what do we take from here? What do we take from here? It is for us, uh, our understanding of this event of civil war, it is dangerous and incorrect to pass verdict without deep understanding of the events. There's no point of saying he did that, he, she did that, who did that. There's no point of that, right? Because this fight is not about Iman, it's not about Aqidah, it's not about the different of religion, it's not about... This is about they both think what they do is a good thing. They both parties think this is a good thing for the Khalifa, this is a good thing for Muslim, and they end up having this war and about 200 people. This is not the difference of Aqidah, rather it's an, just only a political view. And the result is extremely complicated situation. It was quite complicated. And one thing for note as well, these the two camps are the it's basically they're the, the Salaf, like the first generations of Muslim, they are the, the students of Rasulullah. And some of them even promised Jannah as well. I think uh, Zubair and Taha they have what two of the, the people who guaranteed Jannah, the ten uh, Asara Mubasara, ten people ten people who guaranteed Jannah. Uh, Ali had immediate pressing concern. Aisha was really thinking what they were doing is to restore order. Um, and for us, well, I don't know whether, you, like for me, when I first read the story about from that strand of Islam, I was really shocked. It's completely different. So do not read into this weak narrations. Um, and it was from uh, the Caliph Umar of Abdul Aziz who mentions about what do you think? about the battle between the civil war between the Muslims and he said Allah save us to have our blood with that uh, Allah save us from our hands to have blood on that so we might as well save our tongue uh, there's no point of us uh, because the other is also uh, there's a people who says uh, that the other camp is kafir, the other camp is, you know. So may Allah, may Allah give us some more understanding on this. Battle of Sifin. I don't want to go to detail Battle of Sifin. Battle of Sifin is even worse. The total of number of Muslims died in the Battle of Badr, in the Battle of Uhud, the Battle of Khaybar, the Battle of Khandak, all the battle all together, nothing compared to the Battle of Sifin between Muslim and Muslim. Ibn Kathir says about 60,000 people died. It's just amazing. And again, why is that? The, the governor of Sham at that time, Syria at that time was Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan. Muawiyah was actually the first cousin of Uthman. So what happened is they brought in the cloth, the, the bloody cloth of Uthman. They went to Damascus, they put in the masjid. Not only that, because uh, there was, uh, what's her name, Nafia, the wife of Uthman, when the mob tried to kill him, he, she, tried, she tried to protect her husband and the, some of the fingers got chopped off. So these people carry the fingers of Nafia and also the cloth with the Quran, with the blood and everything, put it here. So people, all the Muslim in, in Syria and Damascus, they thought they were all very upset. Get the, let's get revenge and get the killer of, uh, so this is, 
and they even ask Muawiyah, Muawiyah, if you don't get the killer of this, you better resign as a governor. So this all built up and uh, finally the whole people of Syria, they didn't want to give oath of allegiance to Ali. Not, not now, until you find the killer of Uthman. So it's all about the killer of Uthman, right? Because they don't give the allegiance and Ali sent the troops and they met in the town of Sifin. They, again, it is a very heartbreaking just to read this story. Uh, but for us, there's no point of who's wrong, who's right, right? Allah has saved us as both uh, great Sahaba on both sides. They, the most Islamic battle possible, like if you face like that, you can, I, can, I will not kill you because you're my brother. And, and they break for Salah together, they do Salah together, right? They have fight over the day and then Asar, Asar, okay, make Asar. They, even Salah has one Jamaah together. It is, uh, it is heartbroken just to read this story. Right, it was a full three three day battle, and even the salat al zanazah they do together as well. Uh, anyway, finally, they decided this is not probably the right way to do that. Let's have a meeting again. They did the meeting. Uh, finally, they become okay. They cannot reach. They they really cannot reach the consensus, and Ali finally back to Syria, and then um, Muawiyah went back to uh, Radiallahu Anhum, all of them. But um, the negotiation failed. Um, this is probably the most tragic event in the history of uh, Islam. And what is the lesson that we can take from here? You know, in every country when they have general elections and whatnot, right? So if the difference of view, political views, in, can lead people to blood, right? And even uh, even test it to the best Muslims at the time. You can imagine what happened to us. So that's why, that's why the politics is really. Uh, some say is uh, politics is uh, what do you call it? necessary evil. Have you heard that? Is <laughs> a necessary evil. Like during the time of I don't know whether you experienced that last year's or this year's or last year's was in a recent. Um, general elections where people the the Muslims separated because of the the group of family they leave the WhatsApp group and and, and whatnot because of that so this is a politics uh, and again this is a, is a big test and it's a big lesson to learn from from uh, for us as well anyway uh, the second battle this is the third battle the third battle was because some of the radicals is that some people infiltrated into Ali's army. They're the one who say, oh, why you have uh, arbitration? Is is not the right way to do. And they call Ali's kafir. And they, if you think uh, the Sahaba, someone who guaranteed Jannah, they call kafir what kind of person they are, right? So they left the army and they become the Khawarij. So this is the Khawarij. And they go to the city of Nahrawan. Um, there, was, there was one incident where they kill uh, this this Khawarij, right? When when Ali bin Abi Talib sent uh, one of the companions, uh, Abdullah bin Abbas, uh, to meet them, Abdullah bin Abbas was actually quite um, surprised when they this is the, when they like there are so many of them. Normally, during the daytime, if it's hot in the desert, people will sleep, and then from a distance. He can hear like that, and he walk and walk. You know what happened? None of them sleep. They're reading Quran. All of them they're reading Quran. Some of them the Hafiz. And they, so that's where Rasulullah mentioned the Khawarij. If you see them, you're not gonna. They, they are, they are more pious than you, right? So everything has to be just by the Allah. Has to be thing, but their understanding and interpretation of Islam is not right. I so said this is Khawarij. By the way, there was a big battle, and, and and not only that, not only after the battle as well, because of of the impact to the army of Ali, a lot of people within the army start getting unruly and lack of discipline as well, and even people of Iraq still start defying him openly, uh, not to show respect to Ali, and it was Khawarij, a range. 
to have three assassins at the same time. One to uh, one to Amr bin As in Egypt, one to Muawiyah in Damascus, and one to Ali. The one to uh, Amr bin As, he because every governor, every governor and every Khalifa, every Khalif, they will lead uh, Salah, lead the prayers. So if you want to know the true Muslim leaders, they lead the Salah, right? So when they sent people to uh, to kill Amr bin As, Amr bin As was sick on that day. So no one knows because there's no Twitter, no Facebook, no no one knows what Amr was look uh, was was like. And then he came there and then killed the, uh, the Imam. And then he was at the time he was not uh, at the, uh, for Muawiyah. The guy actually almost killed Muawiyah, and and he uh, people uh, rescued him and he was safe. But at the time of Ali, when People ready to pray. Ali was about to lead the prayer, just like Umar bin Khattab was about to pray. And then this guy came up and and uh, killed him. So Ali bin Abi Talib was actually killed uh, in the masjid before the prayer uh, at the Grand Mosque of Kufa. And then Ali Rodiullah Rod died at the Kufa at the age of 63, the same time as uh, so the, the name of the killers Ibn Mujam. So he poisoned the knife, so he doesn't need to be uh, uh, to be deadly. Just just a very uh, quick snatch as all well. can. So the 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 Naza was washed by his two sons, and this is the thing because they thought people was to have hatred against Ali, they were they hide it where the grave is. So no one until now. So there's a lot of people who cl they claim this is the area this, but wallahu alam. It was uh, Hassan and Nusan uh, buried them and they never to told them, fearing of the people will uh, desecrate the grave. Alright, just a quick one, three minutes inshallah. So what is the legacy? Legacy, you know Ali from his bravery, sacrificing his life for Rasulullah SAW. Allah tested him with the great political challenge. He's so brave. Allah gave him the test of huge political challenge uh, because of that. And he's the, one of the Khalif that is a lot of uh, the fitna is during his time. So a big test from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, in every battle, he was one of the, the, the bravest. Uh, if, if not the bravest, is one of the bravest. He is also uh, have uh, combat, winning all the combat and the battle. And and Umar was mentioned, but I will have be ruined if Ali was not there with me because of his intelligence and wisdom. Uh, why not he can be so wisdom if Rasulullah mentioned him is like the wazir of Rasul as a Harun to Musa. And and his, uh, Ali asked, Ali told everyone, ask me anything about the book of Allah. Wallahi, there is no single verse of the Quran that I don't know where it was revealed and what and when and what Rasulullah was doing. He knows all this knowledge about the uh, um, the Quran and and those are the three main things I captured about about Ali bin Abi Talib, uh, his bravery, his intelligence and wisdom because he's a, he's an advisor to Rasulullah and an advisor to all the other three caliph, caliphs and then his knowledge um, and I think uh, when we talk, this is uh, the last chapter, the last uh, slide of uh, Ali bin Abi Talib and I think we can end it here. We do we have any questions? I, I honestly is a bit tough to capture uh, everything about about uh, Ali because um, the one of the big tests I think they um, that have to deal with a lot of people. There was a, there was one comment I remember this comment. At the time of Umar, at the time of uh, Abu Bakr, every time was quiet. Why at the time of you, Ali, everything is chaos? You know what Ali says? Because at the time when Abu Bakr and Umar were the caliph, uh, he was ruling good people. When uh, time of when my time, I was not ruling good people. <laughs> so it depends on other people, right? So I think this is one of. Uh, once the land's becoming bigger and bigger, the com the problems become more complex. People embrace Islam, not everyone embraces Islam with the right deen, with the right knowledge, with the right intention. Uh, some small tribes here and there, they see whatever the benefit for them that they follow. 
uh, this very easy for them to and uh, there's also uh, if you look at the the histories there's also mentions of the name of Abdullah bin Sabah so he's the one uh, who certainly these people who um, who ignites the 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 battle of uh, the battle of the camel so he's the one who go and and, and uh, infiltration uh, do infiltration to the army and and whispering um, uh, sort of rumors and stuff like that so he's the one who's doing that as well and again why people doing that of course there's some political gain that they get so yes this is Ali the, the bravest the uh, the cousin <coughs> as well the son-in-law and the grandson-in-law of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, the one the last Khulafa and people who granted Jannah uh, people who promised Jannah Asara Mubasara as well any question you have you need to have some question for the, for the people on the other camp yeah is it like they believe that uh, Ali should have been the first caliph because of the lineage and that's why they split it, 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 was, it started uh, but if you think about um, if someone if there is a, an intention from Ali that he thinks he was probably uh, a good candidate, right? Um, I, I, I think this is just normal if we have that intention. But the thing is, he's, the thing is Ali bin Abi Talib is one of the greatest iman, right? He believed in Rasulullah, believed in Allah, believed, believed in uh, Rasulullah. And I don't think he's the one who become disappointed because of that, right? Uh, and then uh, his, his son Muhammad bin Hanafiya was one, was was asked uh, uh, because he never met his um, Rasulullah Sallam what Rasulullah was like and uh, who's who's the best Muslim uh, and you know what Ali said the best Muslim was Abu Bakar who's next and Umar bin Khattab so he's the one who said that right so it's a lot of hadith about about that. When uh, when Umar bin Khattab uh, uh, when Umar bin Khattab passed away or Abu Bakar when Abu Bakar Umar bin Khattab passed away for example um, and Ali was very sad very upset and he said no one I would like to die with the records to meet Allah the records of deed as if the record of deeds of Abu Bakar uh, Umar bin Khattab. So he has actually high praise to uh, Abu Bakr and Umar bin Khattab. Right? When Uthman as well, he actually, he was there. He was guarding the house. Uh, Uthman, just say the word, we'll go and fight them. No, no, I'm not going to kill Muslims. I'm not going to be the first person who set blood on Muslims. And he says, okay, I'm going to need to go. Hassan, you look after it. And even the book that I read, he even almost slapped uh, Hassan because uh, Uthman was killed. He even slapped his... Uh, his own son because he thought you failed to look after Uthman so there's a lot of love and everything so of course Muslims they're always intent there are always some friction some uh, tensions always right but the good Muslim is how you deal with the problems not like uh, if he thinks that he probably could but again Abu Bakr right if you look at the hadith Abu Bak when I was with Abu Bakr when I was with Uthman there's a lot of, there are no uh, Rasulullah SAW from, uh, if there is, some people think it was of that, but there is, I think this because of people want to take advantage of that and, and try to, uh, to get some political gain, I think. Yeah. He himself actually said, who's the best Muslim, Abu Bakar, who's the best Muslim, Abu Bakar. When Muhammad bin uh, Hanafiya, a lot of a lot of you look at a lot of hadith and how they saw the appreciation for Ali. If he, if he, for example, he really upset be becoming. Look at this. He is actually the wazir for Abu Bakr. He is actually the wazir for Umar bin Khattab. Even for wazir for Uthman as well. Uh, there, there was I remember there was one story of Uthman bin Affan. Someone came to him. I just got married for six months and my wife just gave birth. And Uthman says, what? This is, must be adultery. Your, your wife must have already been pregnant before you got married. 
right? So Uthman put the, the verdict that this woman did adultery before marriage, right? Before the verdict came and Ali came in, yeah, yeah, Uthman, Amir Mu'minin, didn't you read? Uh, he mentioned Surah Al Kaf, Surah 46, ayah number 15, and Surah Luqman, Luqman 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. If not so, Luqman, ayah number 10 or 11. If you compare these two ayah, right, I can derive, according to Ali bin Abi, I can derive that people can be pregnant, can give birth at the pregnancy of six months just by deriving from these two ayah. And Uthman was shocked because of that, right? So he's the one who... So they are, they are very good advice. That's why Ali was one of the one of very good knowledge uh, about that as well. So if, if there is tension, I think it's the tensions like any other Muslims have tensions, right? So when, like, when we deal with people with the other camp, yeah. should we, like, how should we deal with it? Should we dislike it from our heart, what they believe, or how, how, how should we react? I think uh, I never met, uh, uh, I think I, I met one or two, uh, but I think they're just like any other Muslims, general Muslims, like us as well, like we don't study and learn, so they just follow their parents and stuff like that. Uh, but I met one before, but for us, we never talk about it. Right. Uh, they know, I think he knows by then that we, for us, this religion comes with the channel of Allah, give it to, pass it through Jibril, Jibril pass to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Rasulullah pass it to the Sahaba, Sahaba is to record it, the daily life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the daily life. So how we pray and everything is all recorded by who? By Sahaba. Right, so they the who they're the one who actually pass on the knowledge. Right? If you make these people kafir, then there's no knowledge, there's no deen. There's there's no deen. That's why Allah says uh, the Ansar Muhajirin wasabikuna minal was the ayah can remember wasabikuna minal uh muhajirin wa ansar Allah please with them. Right? And Allah give them Jannah. Why? These people, Sabikuna, Sabikun, right? They are all the first. There's the one who adopt the religion. Who is the one who, at the very young age, people like teenagers, 18, 19, do you think I'm going to be killed tonight? Can you sleep in my bed? Do you think people can do that to, to kids nowadays? No, you cannot do that. Abdullah bin Abbas, he once, he once stayed at the, at, the, uh, at the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's actually the cousin of Rasulullah, but because of the gap of the age. He narrated a hadith. He said, I saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wake up. And at the time, he was probably eight, seven years old. He said, I saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wake up. And I went up to prepare the water for him so he can make wudu. And think about it, for tahajjud. What time Rasulullah Sallallahu wake up for tahajjud? Two, three o'clock? This young companion, by the age of eight or seven or nine years old, he said, I saw Rasulullah wake up and he prepared the wudu. He, if that, he means he saw Rasulullah wake up, that means he already woke up. Why he woke up at three o'clock, four o'clock? So he can prepare the wudu. What kind of, a whole prophet is so amazing, can turn, uh, nowadays if you want, if you have an eight, nine-year-old and you have a morning flight, five o'clock in the morning flight, you have to carry them in their pajama. You cannot wake them up, all right? This this why uh, people who live around Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the trust and the love to Rasulullah is amazing. Mm. Can we like, but we can't blame the, like, the, after generations, generations, yeah. generations, they actually blindly follow. The yeah, they have to study. They have, they, the, the, this religion is about din. They have to study. I once, uh, there's a book called Usul Kafi. I don't know whether you heard about that. Usul Kafi is like Hadith Bukhari for, the, for, for them. It's like the collections of, yeah, if you read that, yeah, it's very tough, very hard. I, I think six years ago, I went with the group and start reading and do comparison. 
and I think the Indonesian Ulama Council has also put some comparison as well. One of the um, one of the points that are different is the way the si Sahaba. Like for us, Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira was blessed by Allah that he narrated uh, the most hadith, right? And he's the, actually the number one that, according to that, uh, those people. Of course, the different uh, sects between that strand as well, the the softer one, the harder one, the, there's the 12, the 12 Shia, there's also the uh, the seven, uh, seven Imam Shia, the, the couple of them, the, the Zaidi as well. The Zaidi is actually the soft one. The Sunni thing, the Zaidi, the Zaidi is Shia. The Shia thing, the Zaidi is Sunni. <laughs> After the Zaidi is, uh, Zaidi is, Zaidi is the son of Ali. Zaidi is the son of Hassan of Ali. So it's like a grandchildren of Ali. So he, the same, uh, if you know the story about how Hussein radiallahu was murdered, right? So the people of Kufa, they want to rebel against Muawiyah, what, what not, a Yazid, what not. So they, they want to have a leader and they, they choose, uh, they, send, they send letters to Hussein, come Hussein, become our leader, right? So uh, everything become chaos and he sent his, his cousin, uh, what was his gap? I can't remember the name. I think Muhammad bin Akil, uh, I can't remember, Muslim bin Akil. He sent people to there and then they killed him and it was too late and Hussein came there and then he got killed as well. And people who contacted him, come to Kufa, come to Iraq, and they all ran away. They don't want to support him, right? And, and the grandson of Ali, which is Zaid, it happens the same thing as well. So we want you to be our leaders, please come and they come and ask, the first thing they ask, what is your opinion about Abu Bakr and Umar bin Khattab? What about them? They're the best uh, Sahaba. And they were very, so you follow, you cannot. So then they kick him out and then Zaidi becomes, uh, right now the Zaidi Shia is mostly around Yemen, around Yemen. Uh, they're one quite soft, but they, they don't see the Sahaba as a kafir. Uh, they just think it is probably more appropriate Ali to become Khalifa, but they don't regret that uh, Umar bin Khattab and, and uh, Abu Bakar become the Khalifa first because um, they don't see that as a as a as a kafir. They just see that is be appropriate, but they're still the best, right? Allah can give them, right? yeah, like in the, in the next day hereafter for what they for their ignorance, yeah. So is that again? Like Allah can forgive them because of their ignorance, because what if the aqidah is not right? Yeah, uh, the aki Well, they have to learn because the. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to details seriously on that. <laughs> okay, I think. Uh, we can we close this as well. Already nine o'clock. Oh.